All right, and so, yeah, so just for starters, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself, your name, how old you are, and uh, what uh, veteran, uh, if you were in the Army, Navy. Go ahead. Uh, uh, my name's Elmer Glenn. I was uh, Army, Force Infantry Division, Combat Infantry, and I took my basic training in Camp Gruber, Oklahoma, the 42nd Rainbow Division, and they shipped me overseas, and that's why I joined the 4th Division on the beach of Normandy, 1944. And how old are you? 95. So go ahead and tell me a little bit about uh, where you're from, uh, yeah, and where you grew up at. I'm uh, from a little farm out in Ohio, Caddis, Ohio, C-A-D-I-Z, Ohio. I went to school, Caddis High School. I graduated there in 43, and I went in the Army in 43. What were your parents' names? Well, my, my adopted dad was Sam Glenn, but my uh, dad by, I never seen him, but he, he was a Stevie, Wayne Stevie. But that, that's all was taken care of before I went to service. We got, we got the name all changed and everything, so, because he adopted me when I was about three years old. Sam Glenn did. And, uh, I never seen my real dad. What was your mother's name? Anna, Mary Anna Glenn. She was a ward. She was a ward. She was in a ward family. Did you have any brothers and sisters? Yeah, I had two brothers and a, a sister to Sam Glenn. And I don't know if I was Ed or Wayne Stevie or whoever, he ever had any more children or not. I don't, I never seen him, I never knew him. So I don't know anything about that. Okay. So you grew up on a farm. Uh, did you do any farm work or what was that? Oh well, yeah, I used to farm. We had a couple of cows and we'd done the farm work. We'd go out and help with the harvest and plow corn and everything. We'd done all kind of farm work. We just. We was just a little, little place in a little dot in history, as you say. You know. But uh, you know, I, I, I like to hunt groundhogs. I used to hunt groundhogs. I, I, that was one of my favorite pastimes, and we used to use them for meat. We ate them. We like it. Like you'd go to the store and buy meat. We'd go out and hunt a groundhog for meat. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad, he hunted groundhogs a lot too. Matter of fact, he, I think in one year he got a, at least a hundred. And I wasn't very far behind him. If I was behind him, I don't know whether I was behind him or not, but we used to hunt groundhogs. We'd go fishing weekends, we'd go fishing. We were, we were just an average, average family, you know. I had uh, two brothers and one sister, and I was the oldest of the the boys. So uh, okay. and so, uh, I know you said you graduated high school in '43, and you went into the army right after that. So, how old were you when you enlisted? I was 20 years old. Okay. I didn't think I was going to live to be 21 either. Oh, really? Why not? Because you fight a war like I did and live, live long enough to, you don't live very long sometimes. Right? I've seen guys, young guys come in there and be in there an hour, two hours, and they take them back to the, take them back, take them out. I was one of the blessed ones there that I got got through that with, the, with the, my livelihood. I didn't think I was going to live to be playing one, truthfully. But I wasn't, I wasn't what you call afraid of dying. I was just afraid of getting wounded so bad that I'd have to have somebody to 
care for me all the rest of my life. Like some of these people here in here today that got half of their leg or half of their arm and the, you know, they was wounded so bad. I would I suffered trench foot and I I went to the hospital in England for about a month, a month and a half, and then they sent me back up to my unit. So a lot of the guys wasn't fortunate enough to get they could get out and get back in again or uh, whatever they wanted to do. But, uh, I got back out. I got back to my same foxhole buddy. And a story about him is April the 10th, he got killed by a sniper over in, over almost in, uh, oh, almost in Switzerland. We were playing close to yeah, Austria. We were down in close to Austria. The place was, uh, Königstein, if you can spell that, that is a German name. We was about the last town in Germany as far as going east and west, but but he got killed as a sniper there. I'm sorry, yeah. what was his name? Graham. Beverly Graham. All I knew him of him is Graham. We were he was Foxhole buddies before I went to the hospital and then when I come back I got back with him. we got back together again and I was with him and for until he got killed, and that was April the 10th, 1945. And the war ended May the 8th, and he wasn't even a month until the war ended. He got to, that was hard to take, and I didn't know his address, home address. And for years I fought with that until her son, grand, her stepson, took a, uh, Computer, wasn't it? A computer, oh, and he looked it up and he found his name and his address and where he lived. So, when was that? What year was that? Anyhow, it was, it was about seventy years later. I found out where he lived and I went down and seen his wife. I seen his son he never seen, and I seen his brothers and his sisters, and I told him that I was with him when he got killed and everything. And that was a big relief off of them. It was off of me too, because I held this in my, you know, it was in my mind all the time. I didn't know where to go or how to do it. And I didn't have a computer myself. But uh, that's the way I found out where he lived. He lived down in Virginia. So why did, uh, why did you decide to go and uh, visit his family? Why, why do that for? And then how did, uh, oh, what a, was that moment like? What would, uh, what should I? What should I have done? I told him I was with. We fought together for about six months. We was, we was about just like brothers or sisters or something. But only thing we well, I was Glenn and he was Graham, and we done what we was told, what we had to do, you know. And uh, you know, if somebody lose a child like that, they wanted to. would like to know how it happened, and I, I just wanted had to take the news to them that it, it happened and he, well, I was with him when he happened, he just was, he had just left me from an outpost, I was in an outpost and he left me and walked down a, a couple, three houses down the street because we was fighting the Germans out in, in the foxholes, they was out in foxholes around the edge of town and we was fighting back and forth with him and uh, a sniper got him. He went down, he was just going down to the company aid station, or the company CP. That was April the 10th. I'll never forget that. And I went and told her about it, and they was really, they was really glad that I did told him that, because nobody else had gotten in touch with him. The Army, no, or nobody got in touch with him about it. They're losing their son like that. So where, did you, or? Were there stories uh, similar to that uh, that you came across, or was that, yeah, how often, or, you know, maybe did uh, your fellow soldiers die like that, or? Well, they, we lost men every day, more than uh, sometimes. We, we, our company was 400% casualties. 
and he was one of them. And he just happened to be, me and him happened to be together. But I always wondered, I always thought I wanted, to, I wanted to tell them, you know, that I was with him, and I got to do that. That was a big load off of my mind. I don't know why, just something I wanted to do. I thought that I should do. So, um, go ahead and start, uh, tell me a little bit about, or go ahead and just tell me your journey from the day you enlisted, where you were at, and then go ahead and just tell me the different places that you went with the Army, if places that you saw. Go ahead. Oh. So from the very beginning. <laughs> you were talking, I asked him a big quick question, because I, I was about every country in Europe, and I was, well, I turned out, I was, I lived in Ohio, and on 43, I, I went to Oklahoma and took my basic training in Oklahoma as a heavy machine gunner. And then, then when, uh, in May, that year, they decided they, they were going to send send us overseas, so they, they sent me out as a replacement. I went to Fort Meade, up to Boston, over to England, and down through England, I went out down on May. I was down, at the end of May, I was down in the bottom end in the June, June invasion. I was on, I was on the beaches of France. <laughs> wow, tell me a little bit about that. What did you, what was your role during that? Was my that's a rifleman. I carried her M1 all the way across Europe. I walked all the way across Europe. Oh, you did. Yes, ma'am. I was the first ones in Paris. August the 24th, 1944. We took Paris. I was one of them. Was in the capture of Paris. Then the next day they sent us, they pulled us back and brought the brass in from the States and about a week because we just captured Paris. And they done parades up there and then we went on and fought the Germans the rest of the way back through the, up, I went up through St. Quentin, up through Luxembourg, up into Hurricane Forest, and the Battle of the Bulge and Germany, but when I clear across Germany, I ended up, the, I was about six miles from the Austrian border. I could see the Alps Mountain from our positions. So. And so uh, you uh, were in, a, it was Normandy on D-Day, right? Mm -hmm. so tell me a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, what do you remember from that? I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't land on D Day. I wasn't one of the first ones on the beach, let's put it that way. But I was right right after. I was one of the first replacements that the fourth division got after after the invasion. I was in England England ready to come over when uh, they invaded they invaded the D Day and then uh, I, I I was one of the first replacements and I went on at Utah Beach. So, uh, what did you maybe see? What did you hear? What was it like out there? Well, well, you know what they say, war is hell. <laughs> it didn't didn't change it much, you know. But we had to just go do what we did. We we captured Cherbourg, the first first port of France. We the fourth division captured it. Cherbourg, and then we went on to capture Paris, and went on up through uh, into Germany, and cross Ger cross Germany, clear over to Austria. I was in a little town named Konigstein when the war ended. Yeah, I don't know. You know how to spell it? I don't. <laughs> I got a picture of it. And art. My my sergeant, my squad leader, was a. He took a piece of paper. How big was that? About 16 by 18 or something like that. And he'd draw a picture of it, of a place within a town square, and he'd draw, 
He even got the shell holes in the church and everything. He'd, he'd draw that and give it to me. Yeah, that's one of my, my collections of things. And you know, I never seen him after the war after over. No. He didn't come back to the States with us. So uh, he got, I, I think he got what they called a point system when they were discharging them. And I think he got out of well, I didn't have enough points. I just lacked, I was on the borderline of having enough points and not having enough points. And, uh, but, uh, well, I never seen him. I, I never got in touch with him. He was Sergeant Salcedo. And uh, he was a good side. We used to go on patrol a lot <laughs> together. <laughs> Yeah, tell them about the stench that you saw when you hit the beach and about the time that you replaced the 82nd and you're the... You mean the 28? The 28, I'm sorry, yeah. Oh, we were... Go to the beach first and tell them what you saw there and what you, what well, you actually saw. It was a mess. There was nothing to stand on. We went into St. Lowe. Did you ever hear of St. Lowe? I didn't know what's that. That was the area of the beach I entered in. And uh, the only thing left of St. Lowe was a chimney standing up in the air. The rest of the house and everything going there. Everything was, everything was destroyed. Every, we left the beach and uh, we went into the hedgerows. The Germans uh, dug in on the hedgerows and then we had more of a Time getting through the hedgerows than we did getting on the beach. Uh, it was pretty well dug in. So, uh, when you replaced the 28th, what happened? Oh, that was up in uh, Hurricane Forest up there. You know, Sarge, that Sarge that you had here, he was the 28th Division and I was the 4th Division. We went in and relieved him in Hurricane took over his foxhole. That's where we got in the foxhole and he got cleaned around and dug up a old grenade. <laughs> yeah, it was, I was sitting on a grenade, laying on a grenade, and I didn't wonder what it was. I, here was a grenade. The pin was still in it, barely. If I would have all hit a blood of out of that hole. <laughs> but uh, that there's just some of the funny things that happened. Well, I would say funny, but strange. <laughs> what about the time you were left on the hill? Oh, I didn't tell him that. I know, that's why I said something. Oh, well, you read about Porter, Horace Porter, yeah. No. He's a guy from our squad. We was taking this as a machine gun nest on this here, around this hill. And they was camped in, they was dug in up there and we, we got up and we started walking, marching fire. We started walking, just shooting, shooting. We we got that that machine gun. They run, and a horse a horse porter. He went in and got their gun and burned it up, shooting <laughs> their own gun. And uh, yeah, he's the one that he carried cognac in his canteen all the time. He would. <laughs> He was a guy from Texas. <laughs> and at the time you were left on the hill by yourself? Well, that was the same hill. Uh, we went from that there. I went out on Gut Point, out, out, out ahead, and I set an outpost. I was an outpost, me and another fellow out. And uh, they, re they got started to fire and artillery in on us, so I dug a foxhole. And I didn't know what the rest of them did, but they. Anyhow, I was there in the foxhole, and about an hour or two later, my sergeant come up there, and he says, Well, Glenn, man, I thought they got you a drug fit. Here, they had pulled back, in count of the artillery, and they didn't tell us. We was out on the point, and they didn't tell us, and I was up there all by myself. <laughs> I was more scared afterward than the was up there. I was up there, I was writing in a, I was writing in a book or a diary or something like when, he come up and said, to him, "Boy, I thought they got you a direct hit." And I was, 
I was okay. Didn't you? Didn't fire a shot. <laughs> but uh, Dad had a funny thing like that happen. You know what? Our artillery gave gave us a lot of casualties too. Sometimes if they'd fall short or misdirected, you know. We suffered from our some of our own artillery, but that ain't uh, that ain't news. So, uh, when did you learn that the war was over? What were you doing? Where were you at? I was in Königstein. That's why I told you Königstein, a little village in the far east of Germany as you get. <laughs> And so, uh, how did you feel? Were you surprised, or what? What was that moment like? Oh, well, you'd have. How would you feel? You fighting all that time, now all of a sudden, now you don't have to fight no more. How would you feel? You'd be elated. You'd be. You just uh, took over the rest of them. We was all glad. We was glad that we. So we, they we done close order drill for couple weeks, and then they sent us back to La Havre and sent us back to the States. Tell them about your experience coming into the New York Harbor. Oh, about the, yeah, U.S. sea bass. I come in on the USS sea bass was carried our, and when we come back past the Statue of Liberty, that thing went almost, <laughs> they all went to one side of the ship to see the Statue of Liberty. That was, a, I just told them about that. That, that was a, one of them. Most pleasant things, I guess. I had to do. and uh, when when he took Paris, well, I was in, uh, involved in taking Paris too. But uh, I was involved in a lot more than the things than that. But uh, never, I couldn't. Some of the state, some of the towns we took, I couldn't even pronounce the name. Not alone, you know, German German town. A lot of time we took a lot of. We even went in and took German towns that their meal was still on the table. That's how quick we we struck him. We hit him pretty hard sometimes, but we didn't mistreat him that too much. Only one time I did when I done to one guy that that there when we as that machine gun that I was telling you about we we went through that and we was, uh, we was through that and we was down there and we had taking some prisoners. And we was down there just kind of fooling around with the prisoners because they hadn't got come to get them yet or anything. So uh, we get to, I went, <laughs> I went over to the, this one guy and I measured him high, high like that, you know. And I went over, I measured how wide he was like that. And I gave him a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> that poor guy was, he was crying and boo hooing because he had shot one of our guys. We knew he had shot one of them. So, uh, but uh, they come and got him and took him back to prison. But that uh, was, I remember that because, it, and I remember his, that, that kid, he was a young fellow. We, we took prisoners 12, 14 years old. I was taking prisoners out of foxholes. They're so scared they couldn't get out of the foxhole themselves. Are there any other uh, memories that just come to you, or any other moments that you just remember from your time? Oh, I don't know. I I had a lot of memories. I I had a hard time forgetting a lot of them. Tell them how dark the hurricane force was. Oh, hurricane forest. It was so dark in there you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. That was one of the major battles of the, before the Battle of the Bulge. We fought up there to the Battle of the Bulge in Hurricane. That, when I, I come to the hospital, I got a, a Thanksgiving day, I went from Hurricane to England. I was in the hospital about a month and a half, something like that. And I came back and after the Battle of the Bulge and we went we finished going through Germany and clear across Worms. We crossed Germany, crossed the river at Worms in Germany and headed east. And we didn't end up till we was in 
all clear through Germany. I forget some of the names of the town. It doesn't matter. There you, there's a book here that shows you. Take that out and show us some. Show, huh? Did you see it already? And so, uh, yeah, go ahead and uh, tell me about this book. <laughs> the what? Uh, yeah, what? See, there's her, here's a her route. Here's a route we went. This is up here in the Hurricane Forest, St. Beth, and then the, up in the Hurricane. And then it's Ferris, we took Ferris, and then it appears all these towns. And we was in Belgium and Luxembourg and all other places. I, places I don't remember. See, here's a legend of it. You can, you can take that. That was a path we took across France and Germany and Belgium and Luxembourg. That's more like the things of the past now. This is Northern France campaign, Normandy campaign. I was each, never one of those campaigns. Luxembourg. I got the, oh, I keep, oh, that there. I guess I got those there, uh, at the ETO book, right? I got those uh, little campaign buttons on them. I, you know, I, I have it, uh, and I got the, well, you got the picture of the, the, in there, but all the medals I got, I got, even got medals from France. French, get to some French medals. Yes, uh, and I know you've mentioned that you had gotten trench foot, was it? Tell yeah. me about that. How did that happen? Frozen feet, that's all it is. It's frozen feet. <laughs> didn't have his shoes and a boot and socks and something on. We didn't have it. We, we was out in the weather all the time. We didn't have a house to get into. Every time we stopped, we'd just make deep. We'd dig in where we was at. And so, how how did they help you? Did you have to go to a hospital, or did yeah, they did took you me? Know you I come through the Hurricane Forest. That was one of the major engagements at that time in Hurricane, and uh, I went. I, so I went back on Thanksgiving Day. They came up and they just going to have to give us a Thanksgiving Day dinner, and my feet was so bad, my hurt so bad, and everything. Because we had walked all the way across from uh, from the beach, <laughs> and uh, so, but uh, they get it, and I, I went back to Battalion Aid Station to see something about my feet, and they took my gun and stuff off of me and sent me to England. I was in the hospital over there for about a month, and then they sent me back up. Same foxhole buddy. And so, uh, which uh, which foot was it that got the trench foot? Both of them. This one's worse. This one didn't. And this one still don't have much feeling in it, but uh, it wasn't as bad as the other. And that's what kept my legs from healing up right. From the trench foot, uh, they, all the nerves in my feet were frozen. So that's the reason I'm here today. I'm still suffering the consequences of that that time over I spent over there. A lot of guys are too. So what, what was the weather, what was that like? Uh, was it freezing, was it cold or? Well, it was snow, winter, it's just like around here. Can you imagine yourself out in the winter of three or two or three inches of snow with your, no protection over it really. We didn't even have tents hardy. We didn't have hardy tents because uh, we moved too much. We had different positions every day. How much do you think uh, you walked, uh, like in a, in a given day, or to get to the next destination? How how much do you think? Depend, you walked? Be, it depended on our our what we had to do that day. We we what was we going to we was going to capture? We was going to fight to do this or do that or going. To, Whatever town we was going into, we was going to we do what we had to do to get taken. And 
so um, after the war, uh, where did you go after that? Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Well, after the war, I got discharged uh, January the 18th, 1946. And I went back to Ohio, and I didn't have a job, I wasn't married or nothing, so my dad was a plumber. I worked with him a couple of weeks, and then I come back to Pennsylvania. That's where I was born in Freeport, Pennsylvania. And I come back here, and I stayed with my aunt, and I got a job down at PPG in Creighton, and I run Crane and run all their equipment down there, and work in the glass house. And then uh, I worked a while in uh, Mansfield, Ohio. I went, went out there in 1960. They laid me off, so I went to Mansfield, Ohio, and with Fisher. What was that there? Fisher body. Uh, General Motors. Fisher body. Fisher body in the out there. I got a job at running crane out there because I could run crane on it. And then uh, I went to. I got laid off there. I went to the Ohio State Reformatory and I worked two years for them for a correction officer. And then Mom wanted to go back to Pennsylvania. <laughs> so I told her, I said, if we can go back to Pennsylvania, if I can get a job, I'll go back. If I didn't, so I went back and I got a job at Ford Garage out of Freeport there. And then I worked out there for a couple of years and I got. And I got in business for myself. I had an inspection station out to by where Freeport High School is there, out there along that old Sinclair station. I've done, I've done four years out there with an inspection station thing. And then uh, 1972, I got out of there. And I went to got a job in Hampton School District. And I became a janitor over there, and I, and I I got worked there for a while, then I got it. I got to, instead of swinging the mops, I get got on maintenance, and I I could fix their you'd be their mowers and things like that. I done mow mowed the grass and stuff like that. And I worked at the school district. That's all. So, and I retired from there. What 1987. And so uh, I know you have uh, children. So when did you get married? Uh, what's the name? What was the name of your wife? Norma. How did you meet her? Oh, Sunday school picnic. And another thing, laughed huh? about her. When I first met her, she lived down by the creek here in Freeport, in Mainville, in an old house, and they had a little little house out back, that was it. They didn't have no water in the house, no bathroom or nothing. So I could do plumbing work. So I got out and I put a bathroom in and I fixed it up and done, put water in it and done it, fixed their, fixed their house up, you know, modernized it. And then I, afterwards I teased her. I said, I didn't have to ask your dad for your hand. I just got your hand because I could do plumbing work. <laughs> Just a joke for her between us, yeah, but, but uh, that's the way I done I did. I done plumbing for them. And, uh, and the church in Freeport, I done plumbing for the new church in Freeport back in 54. So we got married in 48. And she was born in 50, 1950. Patty was, what, 52? And Gary is 54, five. Yeah. So you have three children? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and so uh, tell me how many grandchildren, great-grandchildren? Asked her. <laughs> she keeps her in mind. Uh, I got, uh, say, uh, Gary's got, I got two grandchildren and, and uh, two great-grandchildren there, huh? You got, there's three great-grandchildren there. That's Patty's. That's my sister's children. These are her son and daughter. And that's Scotty there. He's a great, my grandkid. This is great great grandbaby. 
That's my great grand baby. My grandfather. It's quite a family. <laughs> grown in leaps and bounds. Huh? We've grown in leaps and bounds. Yeah. Um, well, you know, in the last five, what, five years, uh, Patty's been become grandma three times. <laughs> um, my brother had two, my sister had two, I had one, and, but I had two stepchildren as well. And so my sister had, uh, has three grandchildren now. My brother has you. One, two, three, four, five, five granddaughters, all granddaughters, and I have, with my stepchildren, I have one, two, three, four, five, six grandchildren, and one great grandson. So. Oh, wow. And so, uh, when, uh, oh, when's your birthday? My birthday? March the 4th, 1924. Mm -hmm. I was born in Freeport in a real three-story three house <laughs> on first on down on First Street. It's three apartment house. There's three houses. And I I don't know to tell you because I knew about it, but they told me that's where I was born. I just I don't remember it. <laughs> and so, uh, whenever you uh, enlisted, why did you decide to enlist? In the army? I didn't. I was drafted. That was another funny thing. I in 43, I wanted to be an airplane pilot. I wanted to be a fighter pilot. Well, I went up to Pittsburgh. My dad took me up to Pittsburgh. I took a test. I missed it by one point. So he says, welcome back. and then another week or so and come back and take a test over again, you make it. Uh, I never got back and they come around and drafted me and I got in the infantry. And I'm still living today to tell about it. If I'd have been a pilot, I might have been shot down a long time ago. <laughs> so do you have any like qualms or any kind of regrets that you didn't get to go back and take that test or what do you think about that? I think it was the will of God to do that to her, because I'm here today. If I'd have done that, maybe I, I might have got killed. I, I didn't know. I didn't have, I'm here today because God wanted me here. Lots of times, some things, things that I would have decided to go the other way, but He took me this way, and I'm, I'm alive today to tell about it. I might not have been if I'd have went the other way, you know? So tell me about, uh, I know you mentioned that you've got a couple of accolades, so tell me all about uh, your medals, tell me all about that. Uh, I don't know, I don't know about all of them, I don't uh, or, That's uh, what they, they authorize me on my discharge, I don't know. I, That's a, they, they made that up here for me for, I didn't really want them to do it, but they did it anyhow. I don't know where you want me to put this. So tell me, what is this? I know you said you didn't want your family to make it, but tell me a little bit about this right here. What is this? What? She wants you to tell what that is. What that represents. Well, I guess that's ever since my time in the service. So whenever you see this, what what do you think about? How does it make you feel, maybe? Uh, I, I feel like I'm lucky I'm alive today. I went through a lot since this was taken. I went through 14 months of war. I seen a lot of guys that wasn't as lucky as I was, or fortunate, or blessed, or whatever you want to call them. Are you? Can you tell them what medals are in there? No, I don't. 
I don't pay that much attention to them. Is this a Bond Star? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Bond Star? American Campaign Ribbon? World War II Ribbon? I'm not sure what this one is. Germany? I think it, that was one of my for Germany. I think there's some French ones too in there. Yeah. Some of his original dog tags. The Sergeant Stripes. His original cap. That was a cap I took out in the. Combat I got that in the. Uh, Oklahoma when I was in the 42nd Railroad Division. <laughs> I see one of these got full of these. I think this is a. Is this your rifle? Metal? More like a rifle. Yeah. I had rifle, pistol. And this is a machine gun. Machine metal. gun. And there's, there's a good conduct medal. I don't know whether I deserved that or not. <laughs> and then down in the corner, this is the division he served under. This is a 40 gear special. That's a special decoration for the, the outfit I was with. And so the photos on there, is that you in those photos? Where are those from? Where? The one under the campfire, remember? Oh, that's in Paris. This is him on the right. I was, I was making coffee over at my canteen cup, burning a cardboard box just to get the heat in. <laughs> and he's in the right on this one as well with two of his army buddies. There, a couple of them. A couple of my army buddies. I think this is in basic training here. And this is in France here, Paris. Thank you. Okay, I can take it back. All right. <laughs> and so how long ago did you serve for? I went in, went in the service and uh, See, 43, 43, and I got out in 86, January 86. 46. 46, yeah. Don't mind me. Anyway. Okay, and so I know uh, this June it will be 75 years since D Day, so uh, have you thought about that? How does that make you feel? What do you think about it? Well, I think I'd, I'd, I'd just celebrate, sure, that's a good day. I went back to the 50th anniversary, D-Day, D-Day's 50th anniversary, I went back to France. And then down into, we went through, down through Cherbourg and all up through the, both the beaches and all the, we traveled over there. They took us a tour of it. And I was in a tour, you know, the bus tour. And How did it feel going back? Huh? How did it feel going back? Well, I don't know. I didn't feel that too much about it. I didn't think not of it. But I, I remembered some of the places that were, where it was at. I, matter of fact, I went down to the beach and I took a plastic bag, you know. With zipper on it, I took a handful of sand to the beach and put it in that and took it home with me. <laughs> so I got some French sand in my yeah. I, you take a month after the after the invasion, that that place stunk. It stunk of all the blood and stuff that she had been shed there during the invasion. So, uh, oh, I, I, I feel I've been blessed. I got a family of three, and I got pretty good health. I, I still don't take no medication. No, I don't take no medication at all. I take vitamins, and that's it. So, uh, these guys around here, they don't, they marvel at the fact that I don't take no medication. But I, I don't even like take an aspirin for a headache. I don't get a headache hardly. I don't know. 
My mother used to get headaches all the time, but I don't. I never suffered the headaches or anything. So I've been in good health. Well, that's good. Like I say, the Lord has been good to me. And so, uh, Memorial Day is coming up. So, what do you think about Memorial Day? Well, I just celebrate it usually just like Memorial Day, like anybody else, I guess. What do you do on Memorial Day? What do you mean? Oh, I call my my buddy that got killed. I call his wife. I, I keep in touch with her yet, but uh, I don't I didn't think that was much of an interest in. Uh, I don't like to boast about the things that I've done. I I didn't do them by myself, you know. <laughs> so you don't like to boast. Huh? You don't like to boast. You don't like the boast. No, uh, I don't. Uh, I don't think a lot of times they, they they give you these badges and these pins and things like that. Um, like some of them, they get a bronze star or a silver star or something. They go to present and they make a big fuss over it. Well, they didn't do any more than I did. But they got they was the right place at the right time and knew the right people and lots of times. It, if you didn't have a brass around here somewhere, you you didn't get noted for anything. You know, the, the combat was won by the NCOs. You know who that is? Non-commissioned officers. <laughs> in, in other words, the privates and sergeants and any things that didn't have a brass or didn't have any. But that was, we were the ones that Went, went through the mud and the mire and through the fire and everything else, and, and then they get credit for it. <laughs> and so as far as, uh, you know, the state of our country today, what, what do you think about that? I think they're losing ground. I think I think it's, uh, well, I'll tell you truthfully, I think I think Jesus is going to come before they get, get everything straightened out. When they, he comes, they'll get things straightened out. I believe that. Okay. And so, uh, for, uh, yes, as far as Memorial Day, um, is it important? Do you th do you think people should recognize Memorial Day, or yeah, what do you think about that? I think, why would that be up to me? <laughs> I uh, I think Memorial Day is important, just like the day the end, war ended. We we didn't have much of it. We couldn't do much to celebrate it then, but uh, I think people should remember all these year milestones that comes comes with. History. You know, I was reading a book out there the other day that since uh, 16,000 BC, there's nothing, been nothing but wars. Wars, it's all wars. Wars, rumors of wars, and all that stuff. Guys, as always, I guess there's only two people in this world are going to have a fight, you're going to have a difference of opinion. <laughs> That was a. That was all the questions that I had. Is there anything else that you would like to add about uh, you know D Day, about Memorial Day coming up, about yourself, about your life? What do you? Well, you know what? I spent uh, about all the time that I've been out of the army trying to forget some of them things, so I don't recall a lot of things. That I I went through. I recall a lot of things that I went through. I would, you can't brag about it. You, you, you was there, you had a part in it, but 
you just not any more of a part of it than any other soldier did. A lot of guys you take a over on the Omaha Beach, nine thousand graves up on the hill above there. And I figure I could be I could have been one of them just as easy as changing the wind direction or something, you know? What else you want, you know? Yeah, that, that'll be it. So thank you so much. I definitely appreciate you sharing too. Thank you. Yeah, well, I just never, I never thought I'd done anything in more than anybody else did, that's all. <laughs>